I assure you that no one involved in a corruption case will be spared, no matter if he is a prince or a minister. With enough evidence, anyone will be held accountable. Pretty clear message, and that was given back in May. Now, let's look at some of the major players that are being swept up into this investigation uh, and the probe. Uh, first and foremost, one that stood out for me is Prince Mita bin Abdullah. He's the son of the previous king, uh, King Abdullah, who passed away in early 2015 and led to King Salman taking uh, the throne. He was the minister of the National Guard. This does one thing, sending a message so that the princes are going to be under pressure. Levin, in fact, uh, arrested in this probe, but also gives scope for the crown prince to strengthen his security apparatus as defense minister as well. The most prominent businessman, Prince Awalid bin Talal. Uh, we know the name internationally, worth more than $20 billion, an investor uh, in Apple Computer, Twitter, Citigroup, uh, News Corp, which is owned by, uh, of course, Rupert Murdoch. Uh, and a link here with Bakr bin Laden, the chairman of the bin Laden construction company, and one that's been out of favor with the Crown Prince ever since he came in uh, to power. They're working on a joint project together called the Kingdom Tower. And Becky, as you know, it was there two weeks ago today on this monstrous project, which is going to be one kilometer high. There were doubts about the financing going forward because of the pressure on the bin Laden group. Now we have uh, Prince Awalid under pressure as well, and, and this project's been delayed by two years. Uh, another prominent name that stood out for me is Ibrahim al Assaf, the former minister of finance under King Abdullah, and a city minister as a minister of state. This is someone, Becky, who introduced Saudi Arabia into the G20, very well known within the IMF and World Bank communities. So a surprise for me to see that come across the board. I spoke to a senior advisor to the Crown Prince in the last hour who said, look, John, this is consistency across the board. A Vision 2030 plan, an effort to modernize the economy and the people, the women to drive in June 2018, uh, something, Becky, that you covered. That's a signal. The third leg of this, of course, is corruption. And yes, I think we could add a twist here to consolidate power. This is a tribal uh, society and the crown prince and, of course, mm. the king, uh, who's uh, over 80 years old, wanting to consolidate the power here and make sure his uh, crown prince in this reform effort has his support. And I've heard um, that narrative mirrored by those that I've spoken to here on the ground. It was only what? A couple of weeks ago that you and I were here for what was a big conference billed as Davos in the desert with um, some three and a half thousand businessmen from around the world, many of those uh, from some of the biggest organizations in the U.S., for example, looking at the, uh, the interest that they might have going forward in doing business here and looking to see what Saudi can do for them elsewhere with their sovereign wealth fund. How do you see the international business world reacting to this? And how might it affect the process, the vision, the project, which is sort of all consuming here, isn't it? Vision 2030 uh, is a project which, which really sort of ring fences everything that this country talks about for its future. Yeah, indeed, uh, Becky, and I think this is, uh, to your point, a very delicate balancing act, if you will. There's the international community on one side, and then what's happening domestically. And let's uh, cover the domestic uh, scene as we see it today. Uh, the growth is almost non-existent in uh, 2017. IMF, and I chaired the roundtable last week, pegged growth at just 0.1 percent this year perhaps just over 1% in 2018. This is an economy that was growing better than 6% in the days of $100 oil. That's a key message from the Crown Prince. The go-go days of $100 oil are no longer there. That's why we need to root out corruption. At the same time, when we were on the ground in Riyadh, I spoke to a number of U.S. CEOs who have uh, skin in the game, if you will, in Saudi Arabia, and they said, look, we love the language of moderate Islam to modernize society, to let women drive. And yes, we'd like to see greater transparency. Now, this uh, source I spoke to in the last hour was suggesting to me, Becky, uh, that, John, this is consistent. You can't put on excise taxes, raise the cost of power, 
uh, introduce a VAT tax in early 2018 and say, well, wait a second, the royal family and some others that were in government before are not touched. So I think the international community, if this is followed through, and that's a key point, uh, would welcome the idea of an anti-corruption probe. Uh, it's interesting, though, that many of these players that we talked about before, Becky, have relations stretching back to King Abdullah. We don't know how deep they're going to be. For example, uh, Kingdom Holding, a major player around the world, not in favor with this mm. crown prince. The stock was down better than 10% early on in trading, finished down 7.5%. They put out a statement today say, we know about the, the probe, we know the chairman's under pressure, but it will be business un, uh, as usual. That's a hard sell as we, you and I speak tonight about this uh, very subject. Yeah, and John, before, before we move on, because I want to I talk to you about Yemen, just for our viewers' sake, uh, Kingdom Holdings headquarters uh, viewers are literally just behind me. The building that you can see with the blue lights on it, a stone's throw away from here. Um, what is going on there tonight and what will uh, the uh, discussions be amongst staff tomorrow, given what John has just explained, will be very interesting and we'll do some more on that as, uh, as we move through this week. John, I do want to remind our viewers uh, of another uh, big issue in the uh, kingdom, the war in Yemen, another deadly attack there this Sunday, an ISIS-claimed suicide attack in the centre of Aden. Now, no details as yet on casualties. That attack happened less than a day after Houthi rebels in Yemen fired a missile at Saudi Arabia's capital city. The Saudi defense system intercepted the missile near the airport in Riyadh. Nobody injured, but it did prompt a Saudi airstrike in retaliation on Sana'a in Yemen. Briefly, John, this war is dragging on, and it's one that the Crown Prince himself is, of course, very associated with as defense minister. What happens next? Well, it's amazing, Becky, uh, 24 hours ago, the confluence of events. We had this anti-corruption probe come out almost at the same time we had that missile launched at Riyadh. So this is a game changer in terms of the significance of going after the capital population of better than 5 million people, debris spread at the east of the King Khalid International uh, Airport. That was extraordinary in itself, but I think you hit the nail on the head here. This is a major test for the Crown Prince. Uh, when he came into power, he suggested that he wants to mark a line in the sand when it comes to Yemen and checking the influence of Iran through the region. Yemen, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon. We see Saad Hariri, the prime minister, uh, stepping down as well. This is a complicated region, and it went up a notch uh, in the last day. No doubt about that, Becky. But the resolve of Saudi Arabia and the UAE to stay in the course in Yemen has not changed.